The question of when psychology really began is a very difficult one to answer. As far back as the 4th century BC, the Greek philosopher Aristotle wrote a book called, in Greek, Parasukes, which is now better known either by its Latin title, De Anima, or sometimes by its English title, On the Soul. But that's not really the beginning of psychology, because there wasn't a discipline that Aristotle was writing about called psychology then. He was writing about the psyche, and the psyche in Greek was not just the thing that was responsible for what we think of as mental functions, but it was responsible for the life of the organism as a whole. It was a life-giving thing. So although the, uh, Aristotle's psyche included some mental functions, like memory and perception and movement and things like that. It wasn't really focused on mental functions the way that psychology is today. Now things went along in much this fashion throughout the ancient uh, world and into the Christian era when there began to be developed a very elaborate philosophical, even, even theological psychology in the hands of people like St. Augustine and then much later uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. But for them, the real question was figuring out what the functions are of the immortal soul and separating them from the functions that, that are attributed just to the biological body. Are sensations part of the immortal soul or just part of the body? Is memory, is higher mental function, which of these go to the soul and which of these go to the body? That was the question of the theological psychology of the Middle Ages. The word psychology itself seems to have first been used by theologians, though. It's usually attributed to... Uh, a man named Philip Melanchthon. Melanchthon was a close associate of Martin Luther, the head of the Protestant Reformation in Germany in the 16th century, and it seems that around 1550 Melanchthon used the term psychology, or in fact the Latin psychologia, in, uh, as a chapter of one of the books he was writing. But there's at least one earlier usage of the term psychology by a not very well-known Croatian uh, theologian named Marko Marulic, who as early as the late 15th century used the term psychologia or psychology in one of the books, in the title of one of the books he was writing. But we don't know very much about the book and we don't know very much about Marulic. In fact, all we have left is, is a, a list that includes the title of this book. Things really got started for psychology in the modern sense with a, a German 18th century philosopher named Christian Wolff, who had been a follower of Gottfried Leibniz, the, the important rationalist philosopher. Wolff made an important distinction between, on the one hand, rational psychology, and on the other hand, empirical psychology. Uh, pretty well everything that had happened up to that time had been a, a form of rational psychology, a philosophical enterprise. But he and, and, and a few others like him began to see that psychology, or at least parts of it, might be studied empirically, or as we might say, scientifically. And so much in the way the disciplines that had once been a part of philosophy, such as physics, had been made scientific by the studies of people like Copernicus and Galileo and Isaac Newton, Wolf thought that there might be a scientific psychology, when he called that empirical psychology. Now, Wolf didn't actually engage in any empirical psychology himself, but he opened up the possibility that such an enterprise might be feasible. Now, in the 19th century, something really extraordinarily important happened, and that was that physiology became an experimental science in the hands of people like Johannes Müller and Gustav Theodor Fechner and Hermann von Helmholtz. And part of what was interesting about that was not just that they had taken what had been just a natural history and started doing experimental science on those questions, but that they started to use scientific equipment, like the chymograph, and the hip chronoscope to answer basic physiological questions like how fast does a signal pass down a nerve and what is the reaction time of an organism? How fast can it respond to a certain kind of stimulus? And then in the 1860s, one of Helmholtz's assistants in his physiological laboratory at the University of Heidelberg in Germany got the bright idea of using this reaction time equipment to study not just muscular reaction times, but try and figure out how long it took people to make certain kinds of decisions. And that assistant's name was Wilhelm Wundt. Now, Wundt actually started off with very simple equipment. He just used a pendulum clock with knitting needles attached. But in 1874, Wundt got his own professorship, first in Zurich, Switzerland, and then the following year, in 1875, he went to Leipzig, Germany. And there, in Leipzig, he set up the very first institute for experimental psychology in the world.
Wundt would stay in Leipzig for over 40 years, training much of the first generation of the world's experimental psychologists. He retired in 1920, widely regarded as the father of the field of experimental psychology.